So today I'm gonna to be doing an eight by eight inch Alla Prima still life of some strawberries. This is a still life that I did probably about five years ago. And so I always take photographs of my still lifes in case I wanna work from those photographs in the future. And that's what I'm doing. So let's get started. Okay, so as usual, I am doing my sketch in burnt sienna. And I've just thinned the burnt sienna with a bit of odorless mineral spirits. And I'm just kind of mapping out the big shapes here. No detail, um, just getting everything in place. And then I'll roll back on my chair about six feet and look at the composition and see if I need to make any changes. Um, I decide to remove the strawberry in the upper right hand corner just because I felt like the composition would be stronger without it. Um, and now I start working dark to light. I'm using a mixture of ultramarine with a bit of alizarin crimson uh, for the shadows. And then on the dark side of the strawberries here, I'm just using uh, alizarin crimson actually. And so yeah, working from dark to light. I like to leave the darks transparent. Um, you can see a bit of the panel through the, uh, through the paint. A lot of that transparency will be actually be lost, but I do like to leave that, um, you know, or, or get that transparency or, uh, initially because I feel like it contributes to a, uh, a sense of luminosity in the shadows. So I'm using a, what am I using? I'm using a bristle flat brush, kind of worn out and just, you know, approximating colors here. I'm going to come in and reinforce the darks, but I just want to get, you know, get some color on the panel here and then I can start making adjustments. Uh, now I'm going for that sort of the green tops of the strawberries, which was kind of a challenge uh, trying to figure out what color that was. Ultimately, I've decided it was sort of a bluish green. Um, the shadows in a photograph always appear darker, I, so I'm lightening those up. Also, the shadow tends to be darker at the base of the object, and then as you move away from it, it gets lighter. Um, and in this case, you know, I'm adding a bit of cerulean in there. Um, part of that is from memory as well, because originally this painting was done in sunlight in, and it was done from life. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, the shadows in photographs appear darker. Also too, you see less color in them. So I'm kind of painting from memory on the shadows, um, and looking for those delicate color shifts. All right. So here, <laughs> there was a quick jump in the uh, progress of the painting. I was trying to capture some of those paler areas of the strawberries and I remember thinking while that was happening it was just killing the saturation which was frustrating. Um, so here I come in, I, there was a few strokes of um, saturated red there, cadmium red light to try to warm it up and boost that saturation again but ultimately that really was a challenge, was getting some of those paler areas on the strawberries and yet maintaining saturation. Also too, putting in these little highlights. Um, you know, the little reflective bits. Um, I, I'm not, I was like, okay, I want to include those because I think it's important, but I want them to be suggested in a loose way. I don't want them to be too careful. Um, so just kind of suggesting those. Now I'm coming in with this really bad um, brush. It's completely worn out round, probably like a number, I don't even know, maybe six. It's just a, yeah. But I was kind of having fun playing with it. It's not a brush I use very often, but it does allow these sort of thick strokes. Um, so that was kind of a fun experiment. You know, often people ask what brushes I use. It's like I grab anything that I have. I don't even know where I got this. I think somebody gave me a bunch of old brushes. So they're not even particularly good quality, but I do like to experiment with different tools. So different brushes. Um, people do ask, oh, you know, do you do palette knife? You know, do you use palette knife? And I've decided that I am committed to being a brush painter. Every time I use a palette knife, there's a certain stylistic effect that it just is inherent in palette knife paintings that doesn't work for me personally. Um, you know, nothing against it. It's just, I like the look of a brush. So I just, you know, I continue to experiment with palette knife painting, but brushes are, um, uh, my favorite. I like the look of a brush. So anyway, yeah, I put on a few more highlights, which I may or may not leave. Um, and then just do a little bit of fine tuning with a small, small brush. 
So I continued to work on this painting for about 10 or 15 minutes after the time lapse um, stopped. So what I mostly did was I came in and I added some thick strokes of cadmium red light. I just wasn't getting the saturation that I wanted. I was kind of matching the colors that I saw in the, uh, in the photograph, but in real life, I just wanted more red. I wanted more saturation. I decided to just use pure cadmium red light with a touch of yellow and just kind of strengthen the red or you know boost that saturation. I think there are certain things that need to be fixed. This area right here in the top corner, that's a little, there's something awkward about that. Um, I might change the shape of the green, you know, the green top of the strawberry. So I'll have to play with that. But the shape of the others I like, and I like how you have different views of the strawberry like this one, you can kind of see the top. This one you're looking up almost from, like as if from the bottom. Uh, so I like the composition and the shadows. This is, you know, I like this shadow right here. There's some good variety of blues in the shadows as well, especially in here. This was lighter and redder. So yeah, I was looking for different color shifts within the shadows. And as I mentioned in the video, just made them lighter. They're darker, you know, at the base of the strawberry and then get lighter as they go out. Um, there's a stroke here. This might need to be softened a little bit. There just seemed to be a line there that, you know, so I might have to soften that up. But uh, as usual, I'm going to live with this painting and see how I feel about it. The paint application in here was really loose and kind of sketchy. It's a little less defined than I usually like to leave a painting but I want to live with it for a while and see how I feel about it like after a few days. It'd be easy enough to come in and clean it up and tighten it up a little bit, but I just want to leave it and see how I feel about it after like say a few days. All right, so it wasn't really obvious in the video, but I really did struggle with uh, making a brush choice. Typically when I do these, these sort of still lifes, these fruit still lifes, I use a bright, usually a number six or a number eight, um, 60, uh, what is it? Princeton 6300 Synthetic Bright. Um, and it's not really important, the brand, but it's just a, a kind of a precision brush in a way. It allows me to put on a lot of paint. Uh, it does give you those really strong strokes. The problem sometimes is with a bright, um, let me see if I can show you one. The problem with a bright is that it is squared off and not this one because it's been used a lot, but it will um, it'll sometimes leave these almost square strokes. And when you're painting curved objects like fruit or like eggs or something like that, it can kind of, um, yeah, it just looks kind of blocky. And so it's this balance of, you know, having those really defined strokes, but yet still maintaining the form. So like, I don't want an apple or, an egg to look like faceted. You know what I'm saying? Like that there's all these flat shapes. Um, it's a delicate balance. So anyway, so this brush, I ended up using a bright and because I think that the, the flat that I started with just wasn't working. So there were a lot of struggles. Like again, I also eliminated the strawberry that was in the upper right hand corner. What else did I struggle with? I struggled trying to get the right uh, greenish color on the top of the strawberries and there was something else. Oh yeah, I wasn't getting the blending. Uh, usually I like to have a nice blend where the white paint meets either the shadow or this fruit or in this case the strawberries. And I wasn't getting a nice, uh, I was getting the edges were too hard. I wanted softer edges and that was partly because my medium was getting is getting a little thick. I'm running out of supplies. I've ordered them and I'm waiting for them. But that medium is one part odorless mineral spirits, one part stand oil, two parts um, linseed oil. Usually it's a pretty liquidy kind of um, mix. And so if I mix the paint with a little bit of that and then I do a stroke, I'll get a nice blend between the edges, a soft edge. But because the medium is thickening up, I wasn't getting that. Um, I had to work a little harder for that. So anyway, uh, just wanted to let you know that, you know, in the videos, it can seem like there's no problems. It just evolves and it's like, whoa, look at that. 
but the, the, in truth, there were multiple challenges. And what I've learned is you just got to solve those problems, keep pushing forward, and ultimately you'll learn something and you'll end up with, you know, possibly with a good painting. So, um, you know, I'm happy with the final result. So um, I'm glad that I pushed through those challenges. And again, I can live with the painting and also uh, do some touch-ups and if anything else in the next few days sort of jumps out at me. So uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this demo. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, a shout out to my Patreon supporters. They make these videos possible. Uh, I got a bunch of little informational videos on my Patreon channel. Link in the description if you want to check those out and help support the channel. Other than that, uh, thanks for hanging out guys. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.